This is a Nintendo Switch. This is a Nintendo Switch Pro. Kind of. It was inspired by the Nintendo Switch. Something that the Kickstarter page wasn't shy about admitting. It even uses the same sticks as the Switch. And we'll get to that. It also has an almost identical form factor, size, and mold. The biggest difference is that this guy can barely manage to play Outer Worlds, whereas this can run Cyberpunk. It's called the Aeon Neo, and it was designed to be the world's most powerful handheld console. And they did that. Here's the beauty of it. Other than the fact that it's a beast that can play Cyberpunk, Red Dead Redemption, GTA 5, you name it, it's not tied to any one store or company. Meaning you can just install Steam, Game Pass, Epic Store, whatever you want, and start downloading all of your games onto the console. And if you wanna buy more games, you don't have to pay Switch tax or full price games on the PlayStation Store. You can wait for summer sales. Or if you have an eye patch and a peg leg nearby and you're feeling a little piratey, <laughs> you can really let your imagination run wild. Or you could just play Sea of Thieves. I think more than anything, what excites me about this console is just seeing what is possible. Oh yeah, this little bad boy might be expensive, but it can also help you save money, like up to $50,000 or more. <laughs> Wanna know how? With Honey. This video is sponsored by Honey, but I'm not kidding. I put Honey onto this thing with two easy clicks, and that $50,000? That's how much all of you have saved so far. By installing Honey with my link, joinhoney.com forward slash beatemups. That's insane. Honey has tracked my viewers' savings and the grand total is $49,681. And why stop there? I want it to hit over $100,000 of savings after this video. If you somehow don't know how it works yet, Honey searches for coupon codes and automatically applies the biggest discount it can find to your cart. You don't have to do anything. It's completely free. After you get it for free, you can just forget that it's even there. Then while you're shopping, it'll just pop up and be all like, hey, you mind saving 40 bucks real quick? I even tried to buy another Aeoneo using my Aeoneo with Honey but sadly, all the Aeoneos have sold out. But it has saved me a ton of money on games, clothes, food delivery, you name it. All you gotta do is go to joinhoney.com forward slash beatemups, get it for free, and start saving money. Just try it out. It's by far one of my favorite sponsors I work with because it's a win-win for everyone. I didn't think we could get something like this now and after seeing it and experiencing it it just makes me even more excited for what nintendo could do either with a switch pro or maybe even their next console now look i'm not being paid to make this video at least not by a and neo thank you honey nor was i given anything to say about the console I was sent the product for free, but the only conversation I've had with the fine people at A&Eo was via Twitter DMs and whoever runs their social media. Not exactly a professional transaction. And 90% of that conversation was just about the fact that FedEx lost my package and this thing got here two weeks later than it should have. Suffice to say, all thoughts and opinions in this video are my own. Believe it or not, this system that was designed to be a Nintendo Switch Pro is just slightly up my alley. And I figured a lot of you would get a massive kick out of seeing me struggle with this thing. And also to be impressed by it because this thing is freaking impressive. It just also kind of sucks. <laughs> See, my own words. All right, I've had this thing now for over a week and I have been playing it nonstop, partly because I installed GTA 5 onto it and I've gotten re-addicted to that game, but also I really wanted to put it through its paces and I wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna blow up. <laughs> GDA, I have wanted that to release on Switch ever since the Switch released. So yeah, it was the first thing I installed and it's 
perfect. It looks incredible, it runs at 60 FPS, I am completely flawed at the picture quality, the clean lines, the crisp visuals, thanks to this 7 inch 800p screen. Running this game even at high graphics settings isn't a huge push for this tanky mini PC at 1280 by 800. I feel like I've been living my dream come true the last week, laying up at night in bed playing one of my favorite games of all time on my fake Switch. <laughs> In fact, speaking of dreams come true, one of my most popular videos on YouTube was how do we make the Nintendo Switch better? And it's funny how much of what we talked about that have ended up happening just not thanks to Nintendo and thanks to this thing. Let's go down the list. To start with, one of the biggest requests were themes. People wanted customizable themes on the Switch. Uh, the a &E runs Windows 10. So just whatever desktop you want, really. I installed a wallpaper engine and got this really nice Xenoblade background that the grass moves and it's on like a day and night cycle and it's just really cool and you can do whatever you want. Netflix, uh, just download the Netflix app or load up a browser and go to any of the streaming services. You have them all. Speaking of browser, that was the next one. Uh, Mozilla, Firefox, Chrome, you name it. Two of those are actually the same thing. <laughs> Voice chat and communication was a big thing here. With this, go wild. It has Bluetooth, so you can plug in whatever you want. I've already tried my Raycons and they worked in seconds and sound great. Or you have the aux, of course, that you could use as well as three USB-C ports. A big thing people wanted from the Switch was a better battery. <laughs> We didn't get that here. We actually did get that one with Switch eventually. <laughs> here we have an average of um two hours, which <laughs> isn't bad. I know it seems short. It is the bare minimum you would want for a console like this. But I mean, there were even certain Switch games that would drain the original Switch's battery in a couple hours. And this thing's running Red Dead 2 and games like that. Yeah, it's gonna drain. Joy-Con Drift. A lot of people wanted Joy-Con Drift to go away. That hasn't happened yet. I can't speak for this after a week, but really, I'm pretty sure they did just use Switch analog sticks, so I could see it being an issue here. I'm assuming they thought of that. You would really think they would have thought of that, and maybe these sticks just look the same. I won't know for a while on that one. <laughs> Crappy kickstand. They fixed that by having no kickstand. It just stands up on its own, which is fine. I do like the slight angle of a kickstand. Uh, a lot of people wanted a second micro SD slot. This thing has a one terabyte SSD, which I would argue is much better than that. <laughs> I argued that if you removed this big thick black border around the Switch's screen and brought the screen closer to the edges for another model, that screen would feel so much bigger and it does. These screens are essentially the same size, but this one is just right out to the edges and it, it feels big. Ah, don't take that out of context. One big thing I'm sure a lot of you noticed already, it has a D-pad and yes, it is glorious. Nintendo. And then the biggest thing that really, when you ask people what they want from their Switch, they will tell you games or a certain game or whatever game they want to come to the Switch. That's not really an issue here because it has everything. I mean, obviously not Sony or Xbox exclusives, but for the most part, it has everything. Even virtual console in the form of being a dirty illegal emulator person. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people want Virtual Console on Switch. Doesn't look like it's happening, but here you can go crazy. In fact, I tried and I had a time. <laughs> uh, to begin with, I tried to put Breath of the Wild on it because I, I mean, it would be funny. Yeah, you know why. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I just couldn't get it to work. CMU emulator and Breath of the Wild, it's, it was hard to even get that to work on my PC, to be honest, and getting it to work on this thing proved impossible. I don't know if it was me or the console, but I could get it to start loading and then it would just crash. Honestly, it was probably me. I probably did something wrong. It's a really finicky process. So I dropped that, forget about that, and I tried to just make a virtual console. And I started by trying to emulate N64 games. That didn't go well either. I spent a couple hours just trying to get Project 64 to open, where every time I try and open Project 64, it tries to open on another screen. You know that thing that computers do sometimes where you don't have the other screen, but 
It tries to open on the other screen, and I could not fix that. Now, with an actual computer, you would just hold down like Windows Shift and then left or right or something and the app can switch monitors. You can bring it back that way. I tried that on this. I tried bringing up the keyboard and holding down those buttons, but it seems like for some reason, this keyboard can't register multiple presses. You're gonna do one at a time. So that's out. I think the only way I could actually get this to work is if I plugged in a keyboard using USB-C, which I don't really have on standby, and I shouldn't really have to do anyway. <laughs> that is really the biggest issue with this, and it's not really an issue. It just depends how you think about it and how you look at it. Because you're running Windows, right? On a console like the Switch, you have teams of people working night and day for months to bring games or develop apps and features for the console. So when you get it in your hands, it just works. It's been optimized for the console, it works. Here, you're running Windows, and just like on a PC, you're gonna run into issues you need to fix all the time. You're buying a PC. It's on you. And there are people online that have this running perfectly fine as an emulator. ETA Prime got Launchbox running on it with a ton of games. I couldn't do it because I'm dumb. It can happen, but this is an issue I think a lot of average people like myself would run into trying to work with this thing. Could I get it to work? Yeah. Is it worth my time? Nah, I don't care enough. I just wanted to record some footage for the video. So that said, let's stop being dirty illegal pirates and actually get on a more morally ethical train and play some actual games that I paid for. <laughs> because that's where this thing shines and that is its intended purpose, to be a powerhouse that plays video games. Now, you little, you little nitpickers. <laughs> I know I've been showing you a ton of gameplay already running off this thing, but I need you to know that all the gameplay I've recorded uh, that you're seeing that's not off the screen is from this dongle. Because this machine here is built purely to be a portable console. There's no dock, there's no slotting it into something and then playing it on your TV. It's supposed to be portable. If you want an expensive PC that you can play on your TV or your monitors, buy a PC. <laughs> that said, it does have USB-C ports, this is for mobile phones, really. It's a $20 dongle that you plug into the USB-C port and it just puts out whatever picture. I don't know what picture it's putting out. I don't know what resolution or quality it's doing. It's 20 bucks, so it's probably not great, but it's the best I figured out. I'm saying this because almost everything I've played on this thing looks incredible. But whenever I try and record footage, I'm like, oh, all right. Well, let's take a look at the games I have put on this thing. To start with Cyberpunk, because I had to. <laughs> But I gotta say, it looks pretty darn great. <laughs> Frame rate wise, it's by far the worst experience I had. At about 15 FPS, it was the only game that was unplayable. But here's the thing. I don't blame A and Neo for that. Here, you're at the mercy of PC games and how well they were optimized, which is why games like GTA 5 runs so well. It's well optimized. In fact, Doom Eternal has been my other favorite experience on this console because it looks perfect and runs at 60 FPS. I've been having a blast running through and destroying hordes of demons in that game on this thing. I love it. It's so good. It's a very well optimized game. It's just Cyberpunk is not. It's optimized terribly and it runs awfully because of it. The same can be said for Warzone, which is a nightmare of a game. It's optimized so bad. It crashes all the time on my PC and my PC is good. <laughs> and of course on this thing, while it does hit 30, 45 FPS, constant dips, constant skips, it just barely manages to run. It looks awful. It's got all those jagged edges on everything. Anything then like two feet in front of you looks like a Picasso painting and it's just hard to see anything. It's hard to play the game. But on the other side, you have Sea of Thieves, which looks, oh, I probably sound like a broken record here, but amazing. Just being out there on the ocean, uh, you could fool me if I didn't know any better. It would look like it's in 4K. The water is so crisp. It runs at about 30 to 40 FPS, but it's so smooth and consistent. I actually feel like it's much higher. I, I swear the console's lying to me when it tells me 30 FPS because it feels like 60. So yeah, it might be a hit or miss with games that are optimized pretty poorly, but then you have a game like Red Dead Redemption, which I would think, I mean, that game even struggles on my PC at 4K, but it struggles on PCs, but on this, it looks amazing and it keeps a steady 30 FPS the whole time I'm playing. Honestly, I think that one is the one that blew me away the most. 
because it just felt like I, I had the C Xbox Series X version I've been playing, but on the go. It may as well have been perfectly streamed from my Xbox. I couldn't tell any different. Some other games I played, like Rogue Company, Again, 60 FPS, those perfect clear lines. You know on Switch, you get those ports and they're either kind of muddy, blurry visuals or if they try and crisp them up, they have those jagged lines and edges on everything. You didn't have that with games like Rogue Company at all. They were just, for lack of a better word, perfect. And I did try out some indie games, games like Bastion or Eagle Island. I stopped trying those out pretty soon because I knew they were all gonna be fine. 60 FPS, clean, great, responsive. Perfect. I really enjoyed that every time I loaded a game up, it just automatically flipped over to me using the Joy-Con, whatever you want to call them, buttons, D-pad, and all of that. It just worked. Everything just worked. And if you want a list of more games, if you go to their Kickstarter, it'll show you their tests and what they've ran for certain things. Like Devil May Cry 5 is 60 FPS. That doesn't surprise me. It's 120 FPS now on the new consoles. Clearly another very well optimized game. Monster Hunter World runs at 50 to 60. Resident Evil 3 runs at 60 FPS. So I would say for 99% of games, you are looking at them running and playing perfectly fine. But if you know a game is a lot of trouble even on PC, you might run into some issues. But then again, with Red Dead, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, and it does have that SSD, and I didn't sit here timing load screens. Couldn't be bothered. They're just quick. It's really fast. I was surprised at some games, in fact. Like Sea of Thieves, I swear, loads quicker on this thing than it loads on my Xbox. Oh, and I can't forget Witcher 3. <laughs> Witcher 3 was a fun one. Because we have that on Switch, and I really wanted to compare the two, and the comparison is bar none. I, I, on Switch, I, that was the first port that I really felt like I am compromising too much to try and play it portably. The visuals were very muddy, but I very quickly realized if I wanted to play this game, I'm better off playing it really anywhere else. This thing? Not the case. The, the difference is night and day, and it runs at 45 FPS, so... I mean, if I had to play that game portably, I know which system I'm choosing. I really can't stress enough how good games look on this and how impressed I am with this thing. It's, it's almost unbelievable if it wasn't for the fact that I, I've played it, so I believe it. And while for a lot of these games, you are losing some atmosphere, shadows, particle effects, things of that nature when you set it to low settings, you have this smaller screen, which hides a lot of that. You don't need a 4K resolution or every particle effect turned on. You don't notice lower texture quality as much as you would on a 4K TV. Or maybe I'm just going insane, but standing in the middle of Valentine while I take my evening poop still blows my mind. <laughs> and you too can be tripped out and let your imagination run wild when you install any game you've ever wanted to play portably on this thing. I mean, you name it. Possibilities are endless. Look, I'm not a PC specs kind of guy. I know that my PlayStation has an SSD drive now and that my Xbox might get games eventually, but what I do know is this thing is packed. The notable things here, I think anyway, is the one gig SSD drive, the AMD Ryzen 5 six cores, the integrated AMD Radeon graphics, the 16 gigabytes of RAM, and look, I could go on and on, but honestly, the rest of it just confuses me. It's very impressive in many ways, but oh boy, it has its issues. A big question a lot of my friends asked me when I showed them I had this thing was, does that get hot? Yeah. It does. Really only when I'm installing games, it'll get really hot and the fan will get really loud. Sometimes while I'm playing games for a long time, the fan might pick up and it might get a little warm. It only gets warm on the screen or hot on the screen. And it's not like cook an egg hot, but it's noticeable. That said, the Joy-Cons don't get hot at all. So as long as you're just playing, you might never notice. It was really only when it was installing and I went to pick it up and I was like, oh, that's getting a little warm. But I also think it's my own fault because I'm so used to downloading something on Switch and putting it down for later. And then I put this thing down and I'm like, ah, go ahead and install. And I probably shouldn't do that because even though it has these vents on the top and bottom, there's a big fan right here and I'm putting it down on the fan, so it might be my own fault. <laughs> and speaking of the fan, it can get really loud. Sometimes while playing, it'll get so loud that you won't be able to hear it above the speakers. Oh, and speaking of the speakers, they're trash.
That is the absolute worst part in this system. Every other part of this feels quality. I love the triggers, I love the buttons, I love the way it plays games. The screen looks great, like, it's even a touch screen. It even has, like, a gyro in there so you can rotate the screen and play games with gyro. It's great, it has everything you want. The rumble is even, like, great. But the speakers, they just cheaped out on those completely. I don't know where they got their speakers from, like the 90s? Side note as well, the volume up is where I feel like the volume down should be, but that, and vice versa, but that's a side rant. So really, the fan getting louder than the speakers isn't an issue, because for one, good, bury that sound, and for two, you should really only ever play this thing with headphones. I mean that. It's a good thing it does have so many ways of using headphones, because you need them. <laughs> if it wasn't for that, everything about this would be quality. It's the one thing that feels so obviously cheaped. Crappy speakers is really my only actual issue. Everything else is fine. I think some people are gonna ask me if it's comfortable and the answer is definitely no, but that's the same I feel for the Switch. I don't think the Switch is comfortable. That's why I use the Satisfy Grip every time I'm playing the Switch. And this isn't a plug, although it is. Code beat-em-ups, <laughs> if you don't have one of these already, code beat-em-ups is always active. But this thing makes the Switch usable for me. Like, I, I can't play my Switch without this anymore, and I only use it with this. So it was a huge adjustment going back to this flat surface. It's the same as the Switch. It's just as uncomfortable. It might be a little worse because this thing's like a thick boy. It's probably two or three times heavier than a Switch. It does start to take a toll on your digits and your carpal tunnel, but... Of all the games I tried, like dozens of games, it was only Red Dead that gave me issues, but I easily figured it out and have a workaround. So when it comes to the main thing this is supposed to do, it does it, and it does it great. Better than great. Amazingly. It's super impressive. And I am definitely finishing my playthrough of GTA 5 because I'm super invested now. I have money in the in-game stock markets and I need to keep logging back in to get my returns. <laughs> but no, I do really, I do really love this thing. It's really cool and just for straight buying games. I mean, even just downloading Game Pass on it. You have all hundreds, hundreds of Game Pass games to start downloading. Your Halos, your Gears of War. I played Gears of War on it too. I played a ton of stuff via Game Pass on this thing. And that's definitely a huge advantage for it. Because I know a lot of people might look at this and think $800, $1,000, that's so expensive. And it really, I mean, it really is. I'm not downplaying that. You do get what you pay for. But I think the big money saving thing that you need to take into account is how much you save on games, having your own mobile console PC rather than a Switch. You think about buying a Switch for $400, that's half the price, right? But games are what, 60 bucks for the good ones? You buy one, two, three, four, five, six games over the course of a year, you're at your 800 bucks and you have six games to show for it. On this thing, all the games I downloaded on it, I didn't actually pay for it. I think Witcher 3 was the only one I paid for because I didn't have a PC version. And then I have all those other games on there that are still worth a lot of money. Cyberpunk, still full price. And I downloaded them all because I already had them. And then even Game Pass, you can start downloading four, five, a thousand dollars worth of games. So all up, this thing is fantastic. And it excites me a lot. I think it's really cool. And if you're looking at it like, I think that's for me, and I, I, I'm willing to spend the money on it, then I think you should. And clearly, there's a market for it. If you sat there wondering, well, who's even the market for that? The Kickstarter raised over $2 million, and it's sold out right now. It's not even a question of, will this do well, or is there a market for it, or who even wants one of these things, or should we laugh at it or not? However you feel about it is really irrelevant because it's doing well. It hasn't blown up on me yet. But what I find most exciting about this, other than Red Dead and GTA 5 on the toilet, <laughs> is the possibilities that it shows me for the Switch. And I'm not talking about Nintendo making one of these, because Nintendo doesn't have to make one of these. What I feel like, and I recommend watching a video I made already with my friend RGT about a Nintendo Switch Pro and the fact that we feel like there's one definitely coming. We did all this research for it. We talked about how we feel like that's going to be possible and what it means for the Switch, what it means for that console and the ecosystem. And I just, I recommend watching that video to be totally caught up to speed. But if you've seen it and you know where my head's at, this shows me what is obviously possible with a Switch Pro or even Nintendo's next console. But let's just just think about a new Switch model that plays all the current games. You don't need to build a powerhouse that can play new games that this Switch can't. Keep it in the family, but just make something slightly better. 
doesn't have to cost $800 with all this pizzazz. It can cost half of that. And this thing here is already almost half a decade old. So all Nintendo has to do is build that Switch Pro or Super Switch or whatever you want to call it and make it a console that can just play Nintendo's own games better. Imagine playing Breath of the Wild 1 or the new one, second one that's coming or Mario Odyssey, these games that we love but playing them at 60 FPS, 1080p or even that artificial 4K that Sean and I talked about which is very possible. I mean, I think we deserve to see those games like that. But then other games on Switch right now that kind of run middle ground, games like Doom, games like Witcher, you could really push those with a better console. Or games that are completely unplayable right now, games like Ark, games like Outer Worlds, those might suddenly become playable. Games like Hyrule Warriors that just released, that clearly had frame rate issues, could be completely smoothed over, maybe even boosted up to 60 FPS. I mean, we're talking about Nintendo's own games. Just make a console that play those as good as they can be played. Nintendo making that console is a reality because now we've seen it happen. But if you like this video and you had fun, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. I'll leave a link for this down below if you do want to try and buy it. I mean, again, it's sold out, but do your best. While you're down there, I'd really appreciate you clicking on that honey link. It really helps support the channel and it's free and it saves you money. Don't buy this thing unless you have honey installed because you might save money on it. <laughs> all right, love you all. I'll see you all very soon. I guess if I could shout out a couple more things real quick. My Twitch, I stream there three times a week. I have a ton of fun playing games, just chatting, and I have a podcast there. Really appreciate it if you'd watch and listen to my podcast. My friend Eric and I put a ton of work into it and it's a ton of fun. Thank you.